In 2008, I lived in Senegal, a beautiful country in West Africa. But I had two defining moments during my time in Senegal. The first was that I attended a church, a small Baptist church, filled with individuals from across West Africa. And every Sunday, when people would introduce themselves, our new guests, they would often say, my name is Kola, I'm in transit. In transit to Europe. And the whole church would burst out laughing. Or my name is Ada, I'm in transit. In transit to Europe. I met these individuals who had first, second, and some third degrees, extremely accomplished, but they were economic refugees. And their dream was to come to a country or a continent where they felt they could achieve their highest potential. Some of these had grown up in farmer families. Their parents had been farmers. They had access to land, but they did not believe that they could make a bright future for themselves and their children in Africa. The second defining moment was my first visit to a market. I was looking to buy a bag of rice. And I noticed that there was no Senegalese rice on sale. That surprised me because I knew that rice was grown in Senegal. As I asked around, I found a stall that had two types of rice. One, long grain rice from the United States, clearly branded a gift from the American people. Food aid that had somehow made its way into the open air market being sold to normal people. The second bags of rice I saw, second set, were from Asia. They were broken rice that in most parts of the world would be used as chaff or feed for animals, but it was being sold at a price more expensive than the whole grain rice. When I asked and inquired a bit more, I learned that 10 new Mercedes-Benz had been donated to Senegalese ministers from this same Asian country as a way to ensure that they continue to enjoy open access to that market. Senegalese farmers could not compete with broken rice because they grew whole grain rice and had to break it to match the chaff that was being imported into their country. These two phenomena made me very upset. I realized that as Africans, we had to do something about the food crisis that was emerging in our continent and was being compounded by climate change. So together with my husband, we set up two companies in 2009 and 2010. The first is called Ace Foods Processing and Distribution Limited. Ace works, it's committed to sourcing from farmers and processing for the local market. Since our inception in 2009, Ace Foods has introduced 14 new products to the market. We're in major supermarkets across Nigeria. We source from 10,000 farmers, provide microfinance to them and training. We have 80 employees that get a warm meal and health insurance and many contract workers and distributors across the entire value chain. This company is now exporting and some of you might even have eaten our food in the Netherlands because it makes its way to your soups and stews. The interesting thing that ACE has proven is that you can source locally and process for the local market and compete if you invest in innovation and serve as a catalyst. The second company which I run on a day-to-day -day basis is Sahel Consulting. And Sahel works across the region, not only shaping policy, but providing value chain analysis, market entry strategies, and implementation projects. We work in seed systems, introducing innovative seeds to farmers in yams and cassavas, and also unlocking the opportunities in the dairy industry. Now, through these two companies, which I work on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm starting to see the opportunities that I meant. But I'm also starting to see the challenges that you and I both share. By 2050, Africa is going to have 2.4 billion people. Nigeria, my country, will be the third most populous country in the world after China and India. Now, that creates immense challenges and immense opportunities for us all. And climate change is only exacerbating some of those challenges. I need your help. There are three roles that you can play to ensure that we curb some of the challenges that I discussed earlier. The first is as consumers. 
you all have a role as consumers. Earlier today, I was looking at the Hague directory and trying to find the number of African restaurants in the Hague. I counted four. Now, Africa is a continent with 54 countries. I tried to count the number of Thai restaurants in The Hague. One country. I couldn't count. There were too many. That shows me that across Europe, we don't even know that Africa produces some of the best food in the world and that you and I actually are dependent on this food. So as a consumer, buy African food. Check that the, food, the source of the food that you consume, where is it from? Africa is actually the number one producer of cashew, tea, coffee, cocoa, yam, cassava, cowpea, and the list goes on in the world. When I illustrate with cocoa alone, we contribute 70% of the world's cocoa, a hundred billion dollar industry. But what percentage of it do we get? 5.5% of a hundred billion dollar industry. Remember I said we contribute 70% of the world's cocoa? Do you see the disparity? So as a consumer, do you check that the chocolate, where is the cocoa in the chocolate? Does it say that it's from Cote d'Ivoire or from Ghana? Can we ensure that we actively track this and that we actually encourage more consumption and more production of food sourced in Africa? The second is that we have to encourage our multinationals operating in Africa to source from Africa. So I work with quite a few Dutch uh, multinationals, and I'm excited to say that many of them are committed to local sourcing. Heineken is one example. It sources about 60% of its raw materials for beer in Nigeria, and it's the largest producer of beer in Nigeria. It sources cassava and uses it to produce beer. We need more companies like Heineken. Similarly, Friesland Campina which is a cooperative made up of Dutch farmers, is actually committed to sourcing more milk locally in Nigeria. And this is a welcome development. We've been partnering with them over the last three years to see how they can do this. But these are just two examples. We need many, many more. Because if a company makes profits in Africa, it must source locally and contribute. It can do well and do good. These companies make over a billion dollars annually in just one country alone. So I'm not talking about a small size of operations, and many of them are highly, highly profitable. So they pay taxes in the Netherlands. Similarly, they should contribute to the economies where they're making money and where they're doing well. And then the third is our governments. We have to hold our governments accountable for creating a level playing field. Let me illustrate. A farmer in Europe or in the United States has access to so many subsidies when the market is good, when it's down, they benefit from these subsidies. Sadly, most African farmers do not. So create a level playing field where you use your tariffs and quotas to encourage African consumers and African farmers, as opposed to creating an evil playing field so they cannot enter your market. I think this is really, really critical. Let's hold our governments accountable. I'm going to end with two African proverbs. The first one says that a man cannot sit down a man or a woman cannot sit down to plan for prosperity alone. In this global and interconnected world, we cannot plan for a future that doesn't include Africa. Africa is an important enough continent and we have to work together as a sisters and brothers to plan for our future. The second quote is a little less friendly. It says, water that has been begged for does not quench thirst. And this is a Ugandan proverb. Africans are not begging. We're equals in the human race. So we want to work together across the divide to ensure that we can create futures that benefit all of them. So if you're committed to stemming the migration, if you're committed to ensuring equity, then ensure that you buy proudly African products, you push your multinationals to do well and do good in our content country, and also ensure that your country creates a level playing field for everybody. Together, we can ensure that both men and women across the world live full and meaningful lives. Thank you very much.